Scotland, over a quarter of a million cubic metres of mud had to be dredged from the area immediately below the foundation and replaced with sand. Only partial dredging was carried out elsewhere under the island and wick drains were driven into the remaining mud to accelerate consolidation as the reclamation progressed. The island was then formed by placing more than half a million cubic metres of rock and sand fill. Its location took advantage of a high point in the underlying rock formation, which reduced the quantity of fill that would otherwise have been required. After completion, the island provided protection against potential ship impact and lateral stability to the tower foundation while acting as a working area for the piling operation and construction of the pile cap. 52 piles with a diameter of 2.5 metres and an average length of 27 metres were excavated by grabs inside temporary steel casings. Prefabricated reinforcement steel cages were then lowered into position and the piles concreted with trenny pipes to three metres below the surface. After completion of the piling operation, fill material was excavated within a 35 by 40 metre sheet pile enclosure, which marked the outer limits of the pile cap. The pile heads were trimmed using jackhammers and breakers. For the construction of the pile cap, 1,300 tons of reinforcement steel were fixed, including 12 layers of bars at the bottom and 9 layers of bars at the top. The weight of these bars required temporary steel frames to be installed as supports. Concreting of the 5,800 cubic metre pile cap was carried out in one single pour. In a 75 hours non-stop marine operation, four barges ferried some 820 truckloads of concrete across the channel. The large volume of the pour necessitated the use of chilled concrete and the installation of 700 metres of cooling pipe through which water was pumped to control the temperature development in the concrete. For three days and two nights, trucks rolled on and off the island in ponderous succession, accompanied by the endless sound of pumps and vibrators. By dawn of the third day, what was at the time the largest single reinforced concrete pour in the history of Hong Kong was successfully completed. Dredging for the Southern Tower Foundation was carried out on the seabed where the shoreline of Qingyi Island plunges steeply down to the water. Here a 29 metre diameter semicircular coffer dam was constructed. Temporarily braced by a steel frame, 95 prefabricated H-section concrete units were positioned in a previously blasted trench at depths of up to 22 metres.
Alignment and verticality were strictly monitored above water level and by divers working in the trench, notifying any anomalies to their controllers. After the cells of the prefabricated units had been concreted, the toe of the coffer dam was sealed with 3,000 cubic meters of underwater concrete. After dewatering and trimming of bedrock to level steps, a 5,000 cubic meter mass concrete block was cast to raise the top of the foundation above water level. Starter bars for the towers were cast into each of the foundations and with the bases firmly established, the project was ready to move into the next phase. Given the extremely short project time, a decision was made early on to construct the towers in slip forms. In this method, concrete was poured into steel shutters, which were continuously raised with hydraulic jacks operated from a central control panel. Slip forming with high strength concrete progressed at a rate of up to four meters per day. The towers, rectangular in shape with semicircular sides, were formed in three vertical sections of decreasing plan area, separated by transition slabs. At each of these transition slabs, the slip form assembly was dismantled and replaced by conventional curved shutters. This facilitated the fixing of up to 335 tons of reinforcement steel per transition. The up to 8 meter thick slabs were then cast in the conventional manner. Slip forming for the remaining section of the tower continued by night and day. At the top of the towers, a special slip form configuration left a space for the later installation of the steel tower heads, which housed the stress anchors of the deck stays and tower stabilization cables. <laughs> 